Today's video is part five in our 10 part series covering Samsung Goodlock in its entirety here in 2024. Samsung's Goodlock is a free utility suite designed for your Samsung Galaxy device and it's available for free on the Samsung Galaxy Store. Links to the other videos we've already covered in this series will be down in the description. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. For today's tutorial, we're gonna switch over to the Life Up tab and we're going to be covering Registar and Sound Assistant. Let's go ahead and hop into Registar. First things first, we'll hit the three dot menu and this gives the developers that worked on this credit and back on the Registar main screen, we have a few settings that we can adjust. The first one is customize your settings home. We'll go ahead and enable it to enable the options that it has. And the first one we have is menu order and group settings. So once we're in here, you're gonna see a few of the items have check boxes next to them and a few of them don't. So all of these that have check boxes applied to them correspond to what we have in our current settings panel. So you'll see here I have advanced features followed by display, followed by connections. And you'll see here, if I go back to Registar, you'll see that I have advanced features, display, and then the next item that it shows is connections, and connections you cannot disable. That's why it's uh, already showing it by default. So we have a couple different things we can do here, is we can move around the order in which they're gonna show up in our settings panel, and we can also enable and disable certain options. So let's go ahead and uh, turn on a few of these other options. All right, we'll go ahead and uh, enable a whole bunch of stuff home screen, all this stuff. And let's go ahead and switch the order a little bit. I'll go ahead and move home screen all the way to the top. And I would normally never pick home screen to be up top, but just for a sample here. All right, we're gonna go ahead and save this. And you'll see that home screen is up top, followed by advanced features, display and connections. And we also have the ability to revert changes while you're working on it inside Registar. And you can reset it to defaults, which I'm gonna do right now. And if we go back one screen, we can pick whether or not we want to show our name or our nickname. And that's going to be shown in the top of our settings right here. You see here it has my name, Brian Rader. Now if we go back one screen with Registar, we have our settings change history. So the first time you turn this on, it's probably going to let us know that it needs to restart Registar. Let's go ahead and do that real quick. So it's going to restart it so it can apply our changes. All right, with settings change history turned on, Everything that we do as far as making adjustments to our settings is going to get logged here. So I'm going to go ahead and do a settings adjustment real quick. I'll turn off my Bluetooth. All right, I'm going to go ahead and turn it back on. All right, hit done real quick. And you'll see here my Bluetooth updated. It was 519 and now it's 520. And if we tap into here, we're going to get a list of all of the actions that have happened with our Bluetooth, giving us a full history of every time we turn it on or off. And this is going to happen for all of our settings changes. It really gets granular too. Look at this, air actions for the S Pen. Um, so it does capture a lot of activity. So if you wanna log all of your settings changes to know what you've been doing on your phone, this is the place to do it. All right, next we have search options. So what this pertains to is going into our settings and initiating a search. So with display policy, we can switch this from accuracy to menu order. So by default, if we go back into our settings and we initiate a search, the results that are gonna be thrown back at us if we search for display here are gonna be based on accuracy. You know, the relevancy of the search term. So you see here the word display is a one for one match for display. So obviously it's gonna be at the top of our list. Now, if we switch this over to menu order, we go back to our search. You'll see here that it moved everything around and it's now showing our search results as they would appear in our settings. If we were to go through our settings and find them in order throughout our settings app here. Allow creation of a shortcut. So if you have this on and we go back to our settings, what you have the ability to do is press and hold on any of these and you can save this as a shortcut on your home screen. And if you disable that, you won't have this option. And the last item in search options is hide tag suggestions. So by default, when you initiate a search for something, it's gonna show tag recommendations based on your search. However, if we go back here and we turn this off, hide tag suggestions, we go back to our search, boom, now they're gone. So if you wanna clean up your search results a little bit, you can hide the tag suggestions. All right, the next option is back tap actions. So if we go in here, the first thing you'll see is an information icon, just letting you know a little bit about how this runs in the background here. All right, and then we'll go ahead and turn this on. And what we're looking to do is set up a double tap and triple tap gesture, which is basically us tapping on the back of the device twice or three times to initiate an action. So you see here for double tap, I have it set to co-pilot. Let's go ahead and double tap real quick. 
and you'll see it loaded up Copilot. And we can add a command for the triple tap. I'll go ahead and tell it to show recent apps. So now what'll happen is when I triple tap on the back here, one, two, three, it's gonna show our recent apps. And above and below it, we have two different options, event detection notification. So if we turn this off and we do a double tap or triple tap, I'll go ahead and do a triple tap, one, two, three. You'll see that the action just takes place without a notification. And if we turn this on and repeat this, one, two, three, we get a little notification down on the bottom of what action it's actually performing. And we have this gates feature. So what this basically does is it pauses the tap action on the back of your device when any of these conditions apply. So by default, when your device is locked, automatically they're not gonna work. Uh, you can turn on or off when it's in power saving mode and when you have low battery. So if you don't want this double and triple tap functionality to work, when any of those conditions apply, you can turn these conditions on here. And lastly, we can adjust the sensitivity of our double tap action. If it's not quite working well for you, you can go in here and adjust the sensitivity. All right, and the last option in Registar is side key press and hold action. So if we go in here and we turn it on, you have the ability to use your side key by pressing it in for a little bit and then pressing it again to uh, initiate the opposite action. So in this case, I have it set to turn on or off flashlight. So I'm gonna go ahead and press and hold this. It turns on the flashlight. And if I press and hold the side key slash power button again, it's going to turn off the flashlight. You have quite a few options to pick from, as well as opening up an application if you wanted to do that. And that wraps up our tutorial on Registar. Next up, we have Sound Assistant. Let's go ahead and hop in here. Again, the three-dot menu just gives us uh, credits for the developers. And then we'll start at the top with Customize Volume Panel. So what we can do is turn on the Customization Panel here, and this allows us to fine-tune our Customization Panel. And it also gives us a little preview option right here on the side, so you can see what it looks like as you're making changes. So we'll go ahead and hit custom real quick. The first thing we can do is we can change the location of where our volume adjustment panel is gonna show up every time we press the volume up and down keys. So I'm gonna go ahead and move it all the way to the top. And now you'll see this in action. It's gonna show it up here at the top. We'll go ahead and bring this way down. And you see here, it's gonna show it way down here. That's pretty nice. Uh, if you happen to use your phone one-handed, you might wanna lower this down a little bit. And down here at the bottom, you have some toggles that you can turn on or off, and basically some of them will switch around, like location, right, left. Um, we have the ability to move right here, like we already touched base on. We can also hide the volume level by turning that toggle off. You'll see here that uh, we don't see the volume level. And you'll see here if we turn it on, we now have the volume indicator right up there. And we also have the ability to disable or enable our floating button. See here, floating button, sync position, and then we turn it off. And then if we head over to expanded panel, we can go ahead and enable or disable the app volume as well as show the toolbar functions that show up in the bottom of our volume panel. All right, our next option in Sound Assistant, and this one's really cool, make your own volume panel colors. So if we go in here and we turn this on, now our volume panel gets really cool. Check this out. We get this real cool effect here. Let's open that up. Look at that, that is trippy. So you can pick between these custom presets here. Let's take a look at this one. That looks pretty sick. Let me see that. Look at that. I like that a lot. That is pretty sweet. In addition to that, we can take this a step further by going over to theme. And here we can customize the colors of our volume panel. So we can pick from some defaults here. Let's go ahead and switch out to this one real quick. All right, let's go ahead and try it out. See what it looks like. All right, very cool. And we can customize this further by tapping into here. And this allows us to go ahead and adjust our colors. Like I'll go ahead and tap here. Let's go ahead and pick green. All right, very cool. Let's go ahead and pick uh, red for this. And then up top, we have the ability to preview this. All right, then we can go back into edit mode. And we also have the ability to adjust for dark mode and for light mode. So right now, I have my device set up to be in dark mode. But if I ever wanna to switch to light mode, we can go ahead and switch this to where it looks like the sun. And we can make further adjustments for when we're in light mode. So you basically have two volume panels. And once you're done with all your edits, you're gonna go ahead and download it. We'll give it a name. We'll hit okay. And then back here, we're gonna go ahead and pick it in our available My Theme section. And now when we go ahead and press up and down on our volume rockers, we're gonna have our new theme here. That looks pretty cool, actually. I like that a lot. Next, we have individual app volumes. So this is really interesting. On this screen, we can add a bunch of different apps that we want to control the volume for individually instead of controlling all media with our volume up and down rockers. So what we're gonna do is we'll hit the plus sign and I'm gonna go ahead and pick out a couple media apps. 
we'll grab Spotify, we'll grab YouTube, and we'll grab YouTube Music. And it's really weird. There's no like save button or anything at the bottom. What you have to do is go ahead and hit the three dot menu up top and hit add. And what that does is bring them back to our default screen here. Now, if you want to remove any of these from the list, I know it's not very intuitive. Once again, we have to go up here to the three dot menu, hit delete, and then pick the items that we want to delete from this list. So I'll go ahead and drop Spotify from the list. Now we have to come back up here again and then hit delete. I know it's kind of a weird chain of events here to make that happen, but you go ahead and hit delete and that'll remove that from this list. The next option is control media volume. So by default, when you press up and down on your volume rocker, that's going to raise and lower your ringtone for incoming calls. But if we go ahead and enable this option and we go ahead and adjust our volume up and down, that's going to raise and lower the volume for our media by default. The next option is media manner mode. So basically when you turn this on and you go ahead and uh, silence your phone, right? So if you turn off your audio, go into do not disturb, any of those type of activities that are gonna lower your volume down to nothing, uh, when you have this manner mode on, it's also gonna lower your media volume. Uh, I'm not sure necessarily why you'd want to turn this on, but uh, perhaps you want to just make sure that nothing plays at all when you go and do not disturb. This is your way of doing it. All right, this next option, change step volume. This one is awesome. I love this a lot. So by default, when you press your volume up key, it's going to go in big chunks up and down in your volume. See how it went from zero to 10? And I don't want to go any higher because I do have music playing that uh, could get me a copyright strike. So you'll see there it goes in in a chunk of 10, right? So it's gonna bump up 10, 20, 30, 40, and you're gonna be at 100% in just a few clicks. So if we go ahead and drop this down, we can bring it all the way down to one. Now look what happens. Each time I press my volume up key, it's just going up 1%. So this allows you to get very, very granular control of your volume if you're finding that the steps are just too big. This is really important when you're wearing headphones. It's really nice to have this somewhere in the middle so it goes up like four or five steps because I notice when I'm wearing my Galaxy Buds 3 Pro, I'll get up to a pretty decent volume and then one more click up and it's like too loud. And it's also the same way going back down. So now you have more granular control of your volume. Hey, this next option is cool too. Control music with volume keys. So by default, when you have your phone locked or the screen turned off, and you press and hold your volume up key and down key, it's just gonna raise the volume on the music that you have currently playing. But when you go ahead and turn this on, we'll go ahead and we'll uh, lock my phone real quick. All right, so I have my phone locked, and you'll see on my lock screen, we have a Spotify widget with a song playing. I'm gonna go ahead and press and hold on the volume down key. Went to the next song, press and hold again, went to the next song, and if I press and hold the volume up key, it's gonna repeat the current song, and if I press it again, it's gonna go back to the previous song. So you have a nice way of controlling your media without even having to unlock your phone. Favorite media app. So when we go ahead and enable this, this allows us to pick any app that currently supports spitting out audio, which I have no idea why Fidelity is on here. That's really weird. Maybe uh, it's gonna let me know of my financial losses, but nonetheless, I'm gonna go ahead and pick Spotify. We'll go ahead and go back. Now what happens here with favorite media app, when you have your Galaxy Buds 3 Pro in, or any other type of Galaxy Buds or Bluetooth device in general. It doesn't have to be from Samsung. When you go to use the multimedia keys that are on that device, so with the Buds 3 Pro, for example, if you go to pitch in to change tracks, it's going to pick Spotify as a default app. Same holds true with your Bluetooth speakers. So if you go to play and pause a song, it's gonna fire up Spotify since that's a default app. And the controls on that device will then interact with whatever app you pick here. Our next option is Bluetooth metronome. So you need to have some Bluetooth connected earbuds or a Bluetooth speaker, anything like that connected. And what this is used for is basically running a metronome for syncing up audio to videos, or if you're into music and you need to sync to like a clap track or a click track, anything like that, you can sync up a metronome with this. And if I go ahead and put this up to my microphone, Hopefully it picks some of that up. Basically it's just a metronome. Next up we have advanced settings. So what we can do is we can pick what alerts we want to come through our headphones or connected Bluetooth device. Um, we can turn the ringtone on, alarm, and notifications. So all of these will pipe through your Bluetooth headphones or earbuds instead of going to your device. And if you want them to go to your device instead, go ahead and leave these toggled off. And then here's an interesting option. I guess if you have speakers out of phase, maybe you uh, wired up your Bluetooth speakers in a wrong series or something, 
Uh, you can reverse the stereo signal, so left becomes right, right becomes left. All right, this next option is pretty nuts. We can literally completely customize the vibration patterns for both our ringtone and our notifications. And when I mean completely customize, I'm talking about going nuts. We're gonna go ahead and hit this plus sign real quick. And we start this procedure off by basically pressing on the bottom, middle, or top of the screen. The bottom here, you'll see here, I'm gonna go ahead and initiate it. The bottom here represents a little bit of vibration. The medium is middle and high is high. So now I'm gonna go ahead and stop it. We're gonna start this over again so we can actually set up a vibration tone here. So we'll hit the plus sign. I'm gonna hit start. And I'm gonna go ahead and press and hold. A little bit of this, two of these, maybe a little bit of the strong one, a couple short strong ones, a medium medium one, a short medium one, a couple of them. And now I'm gonna go ahead and press play. All right, here we go. You have the option to clear it out to start over. You can replay it. And up here, if you want to keep this vibration pattern, you go ahead and hit save. You can do this for both your ringtone and your notifications. Next, we have this interesting concert hall option. So when you turn this on, it's basically going to add some reverberation to your overall sound. And if you turn it off, it's back to normal. Do keep in mind that this option will not be available to you if you have Dolby Atmos turned on. So you do have to turn this off to enable that concert hall setting to try it out. This next option is pretty wild called voice changer. Let's go ahead and turn this bad boy on and go inside here. So what this allows us to do is when we're recording a video, uh, recording any type of audio, or if you're doing a screen recording and you're recording yourself along with what you're showing on your screen, by default, it's just gonna pick up your voice naturally. But what we can do is we can modify our voice to be whatever we want here and uh, that's gonna basically take over when you're recording videos and anything else you record with the microphone. So we can go this through here test. and pick between this, the different this options. Can you see they have all these different test. sounds? This is a sound test. But you need to kind of hear it how it sounds with your voice. So we can do that. So we can record our own voice here. This is a sound test. All right, now it's done. So now we'll go back to these. This is a sound test. All right, we'll try a few other ones. This is a sound test. All right, that sounds pretty nuts. This is a sound test. All right, cool. Reboot. This is a sound test. Very interesting. And what we also have the ability to do, and this, this is where it just gets nuts, custom voice effect. So we go in here, and now what we can do is we can start with one of these presets. All right, and from here, we can basically completely customize the way we want this sound effect to sound. So we can try it out just like this. This is a sound test. All right, let me go ahead and add a bunch of echo in here. Let's see what this sounds like. This is a sound this test. Is a sound. Yeah, that sounds pretty weird. So when you're done with this, you can go ahead and hit save, give it a name, hit OK. And then when we go down here, we have our new custom sound effect that we can pick. And we also have the ability to delete it if we're not happy with it. Last up for Sound Assistant is Multisound. Now this is kind of pretty cool. What this allows us to do is play audio through more than one app at a time, and we can pick a default here for which of the secondary apps that we want to have this audio come through. So when we turn this on, it's gonna prompt us to select an app. All right, so we're gonna get our apps here, and I'll go ahead and pick YouTube. All right, so I picked YouTube. You barely hear some music playing in the background. This is from Spotify. All right, so what's gonna happen now is I'm gonna open up YouTube. And listen to that. We have YouTube and Spotify playing at the same time because we told our Galaxy S24 Ultra that hey, whenever YouTube's open, we want to control that volume along with whatever music app or audio app is also playing. It doesn't even matter. We're still going to control the YouTube volume. And that wraps up our tutorials of Registar and Sound Assistant. If you have any questions or comments about today's video, please drop them down in the comments section below. I really do appreciate your time. And as always, Thanks for watching.